it's really beautiful to see how the music kind of shapes the movement, you know, and uh, and that's what we capture as photographers um, is is the shapes of the movement. The guys from Lost in Music they came to me and said, we've got this idea, we want to put on a, like a Christmas party exhibition and it's going to be about the history of club culture with photography, maybe we'll have a DJ playing some music. And it, what started is initially kind of like quite a small idea for a, a little exhibition party has just grown into something just way beyond all our expectations. When I first started going clubbing, um, dance music was, it was, dance music was like all linked together. It was, it was one scene and it's kind of fragmented off into all these different scenes. And I feel like this Lost in Music party has given an excuse for all these people to come back together again. Literally thousands of photos came in for us to curate from. So we narrowed it down to 500 and the photos are going to be like a timeline or like a, a walk through club culture. It's been great to be involved in selecting the, the pictures for this exhibition. And one of the ones that I really loved was this shot by Claire Muller of, of breakdancers in 1983. Uh, and this is a wonderful shot. It, it's the decisive moment, as Henri Cartier Bresson would say, you know, that it's beautifully framed. It's just a lovely shot. It's wonderful, obviously, also on period detail. In 1986, the job came up at Time Out of Nightlife Editor, and I, and I was doing that for 22 years, and the access that gave me was incredible. When clubs like Shum and Spectrum came along, people knew me because I was already at Time Out, and they knew they could trust me. So I could go along and photograph at clubs where ecstasy was everywhere without people fearing that it was going to be all over the tabloids the next weekend. Okay, so some of the other photographers, there's Dean Chalkley, who's a Northern Soul DJ and photographer, Justin Bain Hogg, who, who wrote the book Pleasure Island about Ibiza culture, um, Elaine Constantine, um, who directed the film Northern Soul. DJ Normski, who used to be a presenter of a programme called Soul Train in the 80s, and he's got some great 80s hip-hop stuff. Fantastic photograph. I remember taking it one of the first um, hip-hop events that ever happened in London, which was in 1986 at um, the Wembley Arena, it was known then, and that's a great shot of a bunch of kids at the front. Uh, and as a photographer, particularly in the music industry, uh, you're always very privileged to be at the front of the gig. Uh, between the audience and the performer um, and uh, there, there's, there's, there's a beautiful feeling with that particular photograph of these really young guys uh, that are so excited to be at the front as we all know in this day and age there's something special about being at the front. Oh okay there's like uh, the break dances there's another shot from the uh, UK Fresh event uh, it was in London in 1986, one of the first massive hip hop events. And uh, as anyone knows, with b-boys and break dancers, that their whole thing is about the rhythm and the beats and the music, you know. And uh, there's a great photograph of uh, some UK breakers actually on the stage, uh, and it's the one with the guy spinning another guy on his head. And I love that really big wide angle shot. That's a great shot that I'm really pleased to see here today. <laughs> It's just these two clubbers um, just letting loose and it was a club that I 
like a lot of those clubs in the mid 80s where people would get really drunk and fall over. And this was a real super trendies. It wasn't just kids in Leicester or Preston or Lancaster who just go out on the binge. This was the really trendy kids in town. Well, I started DJing in 89, and then I didn't really get into taking photos in clubs till into the 2000s, maybe about 2003, 2004. As a DJ and being known on the scene, I might get different stuff to other photographers because like this photo, for instance, here, this is um, David Morales and Frankie Knuckles. We lost Frankie, unfortunately, last year, and um, the, the photo has become even more important to me. You know, it's a great memory of a great man. One of the series that I really love are these shots by Adam Friedman, which were taken at Talking Now and Saying Something, where Giles Peterson and Patrick Forge were DJs. This was taken in 1990. And this is a fantastic photo of uh, a girl called Evion White, who sadly isn't with us anymore, but it beautifully captures the, sort of the energy and the enthusiasm and the joy of, of dancing, and also the real physicality of it. I just think it's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I learned how to go to sleep in bass, which is why I have been and will probably be in clubs way past my last days. put it out on the light box, cut it up, get it ready, you know, make the contact sheets. I started shooting for Kerrang! and NME and other music magazines. I'd be doing celebrities like James McAvoy or Keira Knightley, and it was really exciting to work in photography and doing portraits. I think I was just terrified that if people knew I was a mother, they wouldn't commission me. I had an amazing birth with both kids, actually. Felt, I think, the day after, the strongest I've ever felt. I didn't feel like people... People realise that this was the possibility. You know, all people talk about is the pain and how difficult it is. But at that moment, you have just achieved something that's pretty miraculous. So I felt really strongly that I wanted to tell women it's going to be OK.